I think starting a film like Iron Man 3 is always very interesting because you always go in at the very beginning and saying, I have no idea how we're going to do this. Um, and then you realize, you look back at the previous experiences and think, oh yeah, I was in exactly that situation on the first film or the, the previous film or the one, two, day, two films ago. That at the beginning, you're, it always seems overwhelming. So you can't, or at least I can't, look at the whole picture. I have to look at it in little bits and say, okay, I'm going to do this little bit and we'll solve this problem here and we'll solve this problem there. Um, and Iron Man 3 was an extreme example of that. It was huge. There were things in there that we had no idea how we were going to do it. Um, but the biggest challenge, I think, was schedule. It was a very, very tight schedule. We had 20, 21-week post-schedule, which is ridiculously short for a film of this sort of magnitude. Uh, and we had lots of other problems thrown at us with, with studios, visual effects companies that we were working with, um, had problems, had difficulties. Uh, we had to switch visual effects companies. We had a main, our main star, Robert Downey Jr., who broke his leg in the middle of shooting, which took us down for six weeks. We... We had um, massive editorial changes at the end, which meant that we had to switch actors out, ultimately ending up having to do a full digital version of one of our key actors um, for many close-up shots. Very, very challenging stuff in an incredibly short amount of time. So all of that sort of stuff is the, that's the, the ah, how are we going to do this kind of stuff? Um, but the big thing is time and then spreading it because of the time and the schedule, we needed to spread the work over a lot of companies. And so it's managing those companies and overseeing the, the work and being that, for, from a personal point of view, being that conduit of, for creatively of making sure that we hit a particular standard and a quality. And then it's the team. And you have to have an incredible team of people that you work with directly. And I worked with a, the, the visual effects producer was Mark Soper and our production manager was Lisa Mara. And we had, under those two key positions, we had or we had five or six incredible coordinators and PAs and all these people and visual effects editorial, all these, these, all these various departments that we had working with us, supporting the ultimate vision of creating the best image on screen, but also manhandling and wrangling this huge number of companies uh, so that it would all work and having that incredible I.O. In infrastructure. So it's, it's the sort of the size of it all which is the challenge in the short period of time. So previs is an incredibly useful tool, as the name suggests. It's pre-visualization of, of a sequence. And we use it for... To, to, there's, some, there's something that will often be done by a director. will work with storyboards, and you'll have an animatic that's been put together, um, which is... Uh, they're brilliant, and they're literally individual frames of once every, you know, second or few, you know, every half second or three seconds or whatever, you'll have a different frame. And incredible artistry uh, is sort of shown with the, with the, uh, by the artists themselves who create these. And then that's handed over to very talented editors and, and uh, sound folks who put it all together and create this beautiful animatic. And it gives, and it often has this incredibly, um, incredible emotional impact because it's very um, impressionistic and everyone loves it and it's great. Now, as soon as you put a frame that goes from there to there to there, which is t -t -t -t. as soon as you now put that into motion, it's and it's not nearly as exciting. And so what we need to do is we need to show that before you actually shoot it to say, you know, hang on a minute. So one of the purposes, I think, of previous is to say, let's let's put it into now real world to see if this, ex this really exciting sequence really is as exciting as you think it is once you shoot it. Because when you shoot it, he doesn't, the person doesn't go ch 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 he goes, and it's not nearly as visceral or as dramatic. So one of the uses is to see where things will fall down when you start shooting it and figure out then how to solve the problem. Okay, well, you need a more dramatic camera angle here, or you need to solve it this way, or um, change the lighting, or whatever else. So you, it sort of brings up problems and it highlights issues, and that's one thing. Um, another thing is that, again, if you come from a storyboard world, often... What's in an artist's head is not real world. It's not necessarily a real world camera angle. You couldn't really put the camera there. The lens really couldn't be that wide. You really wouldn't see that thing over there flying across from left to right if you saw it from this angle because you've just established on the other side, you know. And there's all these sort of things. And because in a, in a storyboard it's, it is very impressionistic, you can get away with that. But the closer you take it to a reality, the more you see these problems. And so ultimately in visual effects, what we're aiming for generally is that photorealistic look. So 
you always have to be, you're always, uh, you're always trying to emulate that in the previous so that we can say, well, you know, the, the, the dinosaur, when he lands there and he bounces off, it looks great in animatic, but in reality, when we make it look like a real dinosaur, he's going to look like he's, you know, made of air, so it's not going to work, so therefore the shot's going to be three times longer, so we need to think about that now rather than everyone in four months saying, what, why, why is the shot so long, or why, doesn't he, why does he look so stupid? So we try and solve problems with previs with that. The other way to use previs is to figure out how you're going to do something. Um, and you can either go from a storyboard or you can go, go from direction, you can go from script pages. And then a lot of the times I'm working directly with the, art, with the artist, with the, with the previous artists themselves, and we're figuring out a camera angle and we're figuring out, well, okay, well, if you, if you lift the camera up here and you, and you, you dolly in there and you, you do all this kind of stuff, what will it do to the shot and does it help tell the story and does it get you in the place that you need to be for the next shot and the previous shot and what's the arc of the story? And so you use it as a storytelling device um, and, and a, a problem-solving device of figuring out how you could possibly shoot the sequence. You can then take it one step further and you can go into what we call tech viz, which literally is, okay, so we have a camera that does this, how would you actually shoot that in the real world? And then you can go into this tech viz world where you can say, okay, well, if you put this on a, on a 50-foot techno crane, and you put a camera on a Libra head, and you could swing your camera around, and you're on 18 mil, and you figure out exactly how you can shoot it, so that you can take that on set, and you can say, show to the, the DP and the camera operators, okay, so we need to have the camera on a techno, it needs to be up, moving up here on an arc of 45 degrees, and you can be very specific, and the camera operator and the, the DP can look at it and say, yep, okay, we get it, we'll, we'll match that. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of sort of issues that you know, if you can't see the dinosaur in the frame, then how do you frame it? Where do you look? Where do you position your actor? What should the actor be looking at? So you can figure out all these kind of problems. Not that we had any dinosaurs in Iron Man 3. But. <laughs> I think you can get very overwhelmed with the technology and the problem at hand. So the, you always, the way I do it is always to break things down and to try and figure out, well, in order to solve this, what is it we're after? We want the... We want the person to look like they're flying. So how do you shoot that? And what, how, do we, how do we tell that story? And so you really start just letting your imagination, OK, we want a person flying, so let's draw a person flying. Let's pre a person flying. OK, now how's the best way to do that? How do you actually, is it better to put them on a green screen and to put them on wires and put wind? Or is it better to do this or that or throw them out of a plane? How, how do you solve these problems? And I think a lot of it comes from experience of just having either having done it before a particular way and saying, well, that didn't work very well, or um, just sort of logic that we all say, well, if you want someone to look like they're falling out of a plane, what should we do? Why don't we throw them out of a plane? That's a good idea. That'll make, it, that'll, that'll make sense. So you're, you're constantly breaking things down to smaller and smaller bits and solving each problem that way. And then, once you've figured out the creative problem of, okay, well, we need to throw someone out of a plane, you then figure out the technical. Okay, well, how do you shoot that? How do you shoot someone falling out of a plane? How do, you, how do we, how do we uh, control the lighting when we're shooting over a, a week or so? How do, you, how do you do this? How do you do that? And, and bit by bit, you solve the problems. And the whole time, you always have to keep your eye on the prize. You always have to keep your eye on the original intent, like you said, the, 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 story, the storytelling from the director. Um, that's the point. That's the, that's the essence of the shot. And so we always have to maintain that, but you solve all the other little problems around it. Hopefully, you get to that final solution and everyone's happy.